Let's talk about the best diet for a bone fracture. What foods should you be eating once you had a fracture? Let's say you had some trauma like I did with my shoulder and my elbow and my leg where you actually broke the bone. What foods would be best? And this also includes some type of surgery where they had to cut your bone. What, what things do you need to speed up the healing? First, let's talk about what happens when you break a bone. And it's quite fascinating how coordinated and organized your body is in healing a bone fracture in the perfect sequence of events. First thing that happens is you have this blood clot around these two bones that have been broken. And with that blood that rushes in, you have all sorts of things. You have white blood cells, you have growth factors, you have immune cells, you have something called macrophages. Macrophages are very large phagocytes, which are cells that eat things. So the macrophage is gonna do a lot of things. It's gonna clean debris. It's going to increase inflammation initially, and then later it's going to decrease inflammation. The macrophage is essential and critical in making sure that this bone heals correctly. It's also gonna make sure that that bone becomes solid again. And if there's anything that slows down these macrophages, it's gonna take longer and longer to heal. And it just happens what slows these guys down is high levels of sugar in the blood. This is why diabetics take longer to heal. So hyperglycemia, high sugar in the blood, or a high carbohydrate diet, you know, those things that they feed you at the hospital will slow down this white blood cell. So we have the blood clot, we have the inflammation, then we have the stem cells that get activated. Stem cells are undifferentiated cells. They're cells that don't have a purpose. They can morph into any cells that you need. So the stem cell can turn into bone, some fibrous tissue, or collagen. So depending on what the body needs, it may turn into one of these. Initially though, the stem cell is going to form soft bone or like a splint to hold it together. So it quickly goes in there and it will just start forming a kind of a soft bone. Now, if there's more motion involved in this process, it's going to turn into more fibrin. If there's no motion and it's held from a cast or there's no motion, uh, it's going to turn directly into bone right away. So then we're gonna have the osteoblasts kick in. Osteoblasts are those cells that build up bone, that lay down bone, okay? If you can envision um, one of those stingrays in the ocean that hover around the, the bottom of the ocean. So they just come in and kind of hover about and start depositing uh, and making bone throughout this process. You're also gonna get new blood vessels forming, new capillaries uh, occurring, uh, the nerves are gonna to start to grow back if they were damaged. You're, you're also gonna have osteoclast work as well. The osteoclast cells uh, have the opposite function where they're cleaning things up. They're getting rid of bone. So after a while, after the osteoblasts do their job, you may see a callus. Well, these guys are gonna come in and they start cleaning up that little callus so it's flattened. So they're gonna do a bit of cleaning and remodeling. And that's, they're gonna kick in after two weeks. So these two cells go back and forth in the production as well as the remodeling of the bone. Now, as far as what you need to eat, we need to look at the composition of bone, the raw materials that make up bone. Sometimes people think, uh, you know, when you drink milk, it's gonna build bone because bone is made out of calcium, right? Well, let's take a look at how much calcium is in bone. First of all, one third of bone is made up of collagen and non-collagen, even lipids like fats make up bone. Then you have one third is water. And the last third is minerals. So 48% of the one third would be calcium. 37% is phosphorus. 1.29% is magnesium. And then you have silicon, which is 0.12% and iron, which is 0.09%. Then you have a bunch of other trace minerals like zinc, copper, boron, selenium, manganese, so even though these are needed in trace minerals, that's why they're called a trace mineral, these minerals are very important in activating other enzymes to make this bone solid and work and uh, functional. So the raw material bone is not just about calcium. It's part protein, other minerals, and also vitamins play a big part as well. So the worst diet you'd wanna be on to heal the situation would be a high carbohydrate, 
refined sugar, low nutrient diet. You want to consume nutrient dense foods, okay, low carb, as in healthy keto, and you want to definitely try to do some fasting that's going to speed up healing. It'll stimulate the stem cells, okay? So it's going to speed up the formation of bone and other tissues as well. Vitamin E is going to be really important. You're going to get vitamin E from leafy greens, nuts, seeds, zinc. It's all about red meat or shellfish or seafood. Salmon would have zinc. Uh, liver has zinc. Vitamin C, sauerkraut. You can do leafy vegetables. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing the fruit thing because we don't want to add that sugar unless you're going to do berries. All right, vitamin D3, vital and vitamin K2. So both of these work together to make this bone really, really solid. Um, vitamin D helps absorb the calcium in the blood. K2 takes it from the blood and pushes it into the bone. So some other really good things would be bone broth, and then you have bone itself. Now you could just chew on a bone, okay? But it's kind of, it might mess up your teeth, but there are products or supplements that you can find um, which have raw bone, which would be a, a really good thing to take to give you all of these in the right ratios. Uh, I'm not going to recommend any brands. You're going to have to do that research, but uh, the raw material of bone can help you build bone. And then you have trace minerals, really, really important, and the activation of the enzymes to help you repair this bone. All right, thanks for watching. And if you're new to my channel and you don't know anything about keto or intermittent fasting, I put some videos up here. Check them out.